Thus State of Decay 3 actually have the potential of being the greatest zombie game of all time. Now, you guys may be wondering, Tundra, where did this come from? I'll explain all that in a bit. But first, I have to give a shout out to one of my supporters who's been showing an incredible amount of support on my videos. So, Melon Playground. Thank you for all of your support. Now, guys, for me, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and turn on post notifications as it helps me out in the YouTube algorithm. And again, thank you guys. Now let's get into this video. So, State of the K3. It does have the potential of being one of the greats, but not the all-time greats. And you guys may be wondering, well, where did I even get this concept from in the first place? Well, it's simple. As I was scrolling through my Reddit page, somebody made a post saying that State of the K3 could possibly be the greatest zombie game of all time. And I thought to myself, well, how can that be? Because it needs a couple of criteria, which has already been filled out by a couple of games. It needs to have the sales and it also has to have the replay value, which is actually displayed by a couple of games. So let's talk about it. So back in 1996, the highest selling zombie game of all time actually end up becoming a movie franchise as well in both animated and live action and that game in particular was resident evil you see resident evil back in 90, 1996 i'm sorry <laughs> back in 1996 it sold 2.75 million copies just in the u.s alone and yes the movies whether you wanted to watch the animated or the live action, personally, I love the live action because my favorite actress is actually in that movie starring Mila Jovovich. And Resident Evil from that point on, you can say, did inspire a lot of zombie games. But you also have to realize something. Just because a game sells a bunch of copies doesn't mean that it's actually good. Now let me explain this part. So let's say another zombie game managed to come along, but that zombie game is just trash. Like it sold this much, but it's trash. But yet the other zombie game sold far less, but because of its replay value and its mechanics to the point where it's just intriguing the consumer, that game is way better and actually in a way can be superior to the one that outsold it because of the mechanics and the great replay value maybe even the storytelling and the graphics but in this case resident evil not only sold the highest amount of copies but it's also a great game it has great mechanics in fact when i started playing resident evil i started off with resident evil 5 I watched the movies before I even watched, no not watched, I'm sorry, played the game. And then of course I played Raccoon City which was terrible, I played Resident Evil 6 and from so on and so on. Now we have to talk about the game that is actually ranked probably 9 times out of 10 gonna be in the number 1 spot. And till this very day, we are still waiting on the next installment, which then goes to show that just because it didn't sell as much doesn't mean that it's not better. <laughs> because this game, trust me, has been, us zombie fans have literally been waiting on this game for years. <laughs> which goes to show that this game is truly has its replay values right, its mechanics right, and so on and so on. So let's talk about the most popular zombie game considered by many of all time. Now, this game is perhaps my favorite zombie game of all time. And in fact, this game was so influential that it literally had games that come after it kind of take some you know some inspiration from it that game being left for dead and the left for dead franchise like hell. you see left for dead was released back in 2008 
and it was developed by Valve. So this game in particular, when I started playing, I did not start with Left 4 Dead 2. I actually started, no, I didn't start with Left 4 Dead 1. I'm sorry. I started with Left 4 Dead 2's demo. Kill all sons of bitches. That's my official instructions. And when I tell you I was playing that demo for like maybe two to three months before I ever even got my hands on Left 4 Dead. It was just amazing. Every time I hopped on a demo, there were people constantly playing it, constantly, constantly, constantly playing it. But that's just not it. It was the mechanics. It was the graphics. It wasn't really even a story. It was about four groups of survivors just trying to make it out. Happening. This is not happening. Aren't they supposed to be saving our asses? Looks like there's been a change of plans. Trying to survive the zombie apocalypse of the green flu virus. And when I tell you when I finally got my hands on Left 4 Dead 1, I didn't even have internet access. I was literally playing offline by myself for months before I even had internet. And by the time I had internet, I got my hands on Left 4 Dead 2. And man, oh man, was this one even more popular than the first. Because you see, Valve did something right. They took a great game. And this is where many games should actually learn from Valve and how they did this. Because the mechanics was great. They knew the mechanics was great. And all they did was add a little and change a little. And what they did was they took the darkness from Left 4 Dead 1, you know, that it was like all kind of dark and, you know, gloomy. And then on Left 4 Dead 2, they had it bright, you know, sunny. Like, this is what it looked like in the nighttime, but this is what it looks like in the daytime. But don't get it twisted. We can still get dark and gloomy. Now, they also added in, you know, some, a couple more special infected, you know, here and there. And then they gave us brand new characters with our favorite one. And let's be honest, Ellis is actually our favorite zombie character of the Left 4 Dead franchise because of his <laughs> wittiness, his funniness, and of course his stories about his buddy Keith. We don't ever get tired of it. But you guys may be saying, Tundra, how does this become the most popular zombie game of all time? Because you see, till this very day, Left 4 Dead 1 was released back in 2008. Left 4 Dead 2 was released back in 2009. And still, to this very day, every time a full player co-op zombie game comes out, it is instantly compared to the lights of Left 4 Dead and the Left 4 Dead franchise. Take for instance, it's influence, okay? Zombie games that has come after it, whether it be Dying Light, Dead Island, which is one of my personal favorites as well, even games like State of Decay. Some of these games literally take influence from them. Like, for instance, the naming of their special infected. For instance, you have Smoker Smokes, Hunter Hunts, Spitter Spits, Boomer Goes Boom, and then you got the big one himself, Tank. Now, when you take a look at a game like State of Decay, they also took some from that. Juggernaut is a big guy. Feral is a feral beast, much like Hunter. Bloater explodes, Screamer screams. You get the picture. Even in Dead Island, you had Ram, who is another version of you know doing exactly what the name entails of the special infected but not only that left 4 dead 2 had game modes where you can even be the special infected which was fun it even had realism mode where you cannot see where your other teammates are located you if you didn't want to play online you could play offline and you will still have a grand time all you have to do put some music in and now you're gonna have a ball. Simple. And not only did Resident Evil make it into the movies, but so did a special little character that many people did not know, which made it into a popular movie on its own. 
That's right, if you have ever watched the movie Cabin in the Woods, you may be familiar with that little scene where she is literally trapped in this little mechanic where all these monsters are, you know, in these pods and they're moving around. But a Left 4 Dead special effect that managed to make his way into that movie, which makes me think that the creator of the movie is a fan of Left 4 Dead 2 because Boomer was actually in that movie. He was actually one of the monsters that was actually in one of those containers. Don't believe me? Well, let's take a look. Now, I'm not going to say that State of Decay 3 cannot potentially be one of the greats because it can definitely be in many people's top 10 and in fact it's actually in my top 10 scratch that it's actually in my top 5 but you also have to realize something like Call of Duty in their zombie franchise especially Black Ops 2 and 3 it's it's quite up there and it's hard to compete with games like that because my top five zombie games of all time is of course Left 4 Dead, The Walking Dead Telltale series, State of Decay, Dead Island, and I might have to throw Resident Evil in there because, you know, again, I did start off with Resident Evil 5. But to say that State of Decay 3 can be the greatest zombie game of all time when we don't really know how well the game will play or how well the game will sell. And I personally think the game will sell well because it seems like every single day we are getting more and more people that are joining the State of Decay community. And of course, they're becoming content creators on the State of Decay, um, State of Decay 2. I myself have found success thanks to State of Decay. And in my opinion, I do truly believe that Undead Labs are doing some amazing things. They are constantly updating the game with personally one of my favorites being Update 37 because they gave us the curveball mechanic, right? And that just added a whole nother layer of wanting to return back to the game because you can make the option of having your game benefit you in a way by having your curveballs being positive only but if you want more of a challenge but that right there that's for new players like if you're new use the positive curveballs you know to benefit you and you know you have experienced players I am somewhat of a experienced player. If I sat up here and told you I'm a I'm the biggest experienced player, I'll be lying. But as an experienced player myself, I can honestly tell you that lethal mixed with negative curveballs is kind of a challenge because one, the play cards are kind of difficult to destroy once you are on that level, and then mixed in with negative curveballs, you can occasionally get that black curveball, and then you can get bangonomics, and if you dealt with bangonomics i'm not gonna lie that alone will cause you to have some, <laughs> it will, it's gonna cause you to have some problems i'm not gonna lie but in my opinion i do believe that state of the k3 can have the potential to be in a lot of people's top tens maybe even in a lot of people's top fives so we have to give undead labs a ton of credit for that and i for one am still waiting for a good left for dead game you know evolve was trash back for blood was trash you know a lot of zombie games came after trying to be the next left for dead was just utter trash but i don't see state of decay 3 as being trash as like i said undead labs they're doing their best to make one of the best zombie games that they can possibly make and i think as fans of the game that's basically all we can truly ask for now if you did enjoy this video guys please for me drop a like leave a comment and subscribe to the channel more videos will be coming soon it's your boy king tundra and i'm out